You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Order of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there, I'm Philip Heitzen, and today is Friday, April 29th, 2022. Six. Does your CFO trust the savings numbers that you're reporting? When my experience, one of the biggest disconnects between procurement and finance is the CFO office will challenge procurement that they do not see our claim savings showing up in their financial statements. This is particularly true in times of inflation, where many claimed cost savings are cost avoidance rather than cost savings. So what can we do about it? Well, in today's tip of the week, I've used a simple tactic to drive savings alignment between procurement and finance. And that is to agree the savings methodology that we use to calculate savings before the start of a project rather than after. This way, when you are calculating the savings, you have already agreed the methodology, avoiding that often made claim that we select the best methodology that allows us to report the highest savings. Five. In this week's podcast, I spoke with my Art of Procurement partner, Kelly Barner, on her experience as part of the inaugural LinkedIn Creator Accelerator program. In the podcast, Kelly shared a number of tips that she learned directly from LinkedIn on how to increase engagement on the platform. However, our primary focus was on the topic of her research, accelerating the conversation around supplier diversity. Throughout the program, Kelly spoke with many different stakeholders around the topic of supplier diversity. We actually ended the very last LinkedIn Live audio discussion that we had was around, is it good or bad for supplier diversity to be rolled into ESG, which also includes you know, regulatory governance and environmental issues? And generally speaking, the the opinion was it was a good thing because more attention and resources come with it. Mm -hmm. But I do worry, and maybe because I hear some of the frustrated voices in my head still, I worry about the individuals involved in this movement because for them, the true cause is racial equality, which is rolled into diversity, rolled into ESG, maybe rolled into DEI, depending on your corporate structure. I don't think we have figured out where these initiatives are going. And I think we have to be very careful to continue investing, continue creating transparency, but being open to new shifts, because I certainly don't think we're on any kind of fixed trajectory. Kelly has a number of insights and perhaps some hard truths from her discussions with a number of different interested parties. You can hear all of her findings on our latest Art of Procurement podcast, wherever you choose to listen to your podcasts. Four. I just returned from ProcureCon Indirect West in Phoenix, and what was the first in-person procurement conference that I've attended since the pandemic? I was impressed by the turnout of procurement leaders, and from anecdotal evidence shared by attendees, it certainly sounds like ProcureCon has been the best attended to date since events kicked back off, at least here in the US. My takeaway was that there's a significant buzz around the procurement community created by a plethora of early stage companies, many who did not exist pre-COVID, or if they did, have grown exponentially over the past two years. I had the pleasure of facilitating two panel discussions while I was on site, one on tailspend and one on the procurement intake process. And here are a couple of quick takeaways from those panels. On tailspend, while the number of solutions are exploding to support tailspend management, there's no singular way or accepted best practice to manage this subsection of spend. If anything, panelists took a targeted category-by-category approach with different tactics applied to each category rather than a one-size-fits-all approach. And the idea of a procurement intake process is certainly nothing new, but it's finally getting a lot more attention. Used as a key tool for procurement to accelerate the procurement process, connect all interested parties such as finance, privacy, and info security, and ultimately significantly increase the user experience. This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. Speaking of user experience, we at Art of Procurement regularly sell our products and services to non-procurement customers who work in businesses that have established procurement teams themselves. Well, we usually try and avoid procurement, and procurement makes life difficult, are two common lines that we hear. If we hear that, you can be sure that your stakeholders are using similar language with their prospective suppliers. And that's why on this week's AOP Live webinar, I was especially interested to hear 
Nick Wingbermule, Senior Director of Capabilities and Continuous Improvement within the North American Zone Sustainability and Procurement Department at Anheuser-Busch, or AB InBev, talk about the procurement customer experience being one of two major continuous improvement pillars for his company. It's called out by them in their key procurement transformation strategies. The leading companies that we talk to, like AB InBev, are prioritizing their focus on customer experience. We believe that this is imperative to the future role of procurement. Two. What comes up must come down. Well, that certainly appears to be the case for US trucking demand since the beginning of March. An analyst note from Ken Hoxter, the Managing Director of Bank of America's Trucking Research, shows that shippers are seeing rapidly softening demand for trucks, with a gauge tracking truckload demand falling to its lowest level since June 2020. Meanwhile, Craig Fuller, CEO of transportation media and data company Freightwaves, he reports that trucking spot market rates have just dropped off a cliff since March. Fuller is concerned that the United States is at the start of a trucking recession that could decimate truckers' ability to dictate prices and push some small trucking firms into bankruptcy. So definitely some changes there in the trucking market. Now, shipping demand is often an advanced signal of recessions, and time will tell if this is the case in 2022, or if plummeting demand is actually due to the lack of shipments being made out of China due to their ongoing COVID lockdowns. Either way, this suggests that supply chain disruptions are not going to end anytime soon. One. On May 11th, we'll be joined by Joseph Yukura, the founder of the International Association for Data Quality, Governance and Analytics, or IADQGA, and Vishal Patel of iValua, for an AOP Live session focusing on the results of the fifth annual Data Quality and Governance Study that is conducted by the IADQGA. Now, this study addresses the critical goal of improving the quality of supply chain data and governance to support data-driven decision-making, and it provides insights into procurement's current digital readiness. Joseph and Vishal will answer live audience questions related to data quality and actionability, such as how to get started on a data quality journey despite the complexity of today's business environment, best practices and rules of thumb about the lifespan of corporate data, and what procurement should be doing differently and better or better with the system-generated data they already have access to. Now, to make sure that you don't miss out, register today, and you'll be prompted to submit your questions in advance of the event or live on the day. Now, just go to artofprocurement.com slash calendar to find out more. And you can find all the links associated with stories mentioned today at the show notes page for this episode at artofprocurement.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.